by. All right, welcome, welcome to Yin Yoga. Um, this is going to be a Yin Yoga class focus on opening up the side body, the lungs in particular, moving some of that energy in the lungs, um, among other things, but that'll be a main focus. If you want to grab a prop or two, I recommend that, but you can get away with out props for this practice. I'm gonna sit on a prop because we're gonna start seated today. And sometimes it's just a little nicer thing to do for yourself to sit up on a prop, especially if you have tight hips or a tight low back. All right, so we'll take a moment and lift the shoulders up, back and down. You'll do that twice more, lifting up, back and down, and up, back and down. And we'll just take this pause, landing in our seat, landing on our mat, can either close the eyes all the way or halfway. Start to find your breath, inhaling wide and full. And as you exhale, let it all go. We'll do that again. Inhale wide and full. And exhale, let it go. Two more breaths like that, inhaling into the width of your lungs. And exhale, let it go. And once more. And then if you'd like to set an intention for class today, you can gather your hands together at your palms. You can even rub your palms together, generating some warmth. At the time that this video is recorded, it's kind of chilly outside, just a little bit. So this feels appropriate to rub those palms. And we'll gather our thumb tips to our sternum. Start to imagine how you want to feel after this practice today. What do you want to receive from your yin practice? Maybe it's to feel a little more embodied, a little more connected to yourself. Or maybe it's to feel grounded. Or maybe it's just to hit the pause button on your life. Whatever is showing up for you, usually it's the first thing that's pretty clear. Let that be your intention and let that kind of sink in for a moment. Maybe even imagine that intention rest between your palms. So if nothing's coming to mind, I'm gonna offer grounding as the intention today. We'll breathe our intention to light. So imagining it resting inside your palms, inhale, fill up, and exhale, let it all go. Release your hands, open your eyes. All right, we're going to stay seated just for a little bit longer. You're gonna do a little side bend. You're gonna uh, raise the arms up and we'll actually side bend. I'm gonna take my right hand to the floor, stretch the left arm over your head. And we're gonna hang out here for a moment. It's really important that both of your sitting bones are rooted on the mat that we're not lifting one sitting bone completely off. You're pushing the ground away and lifting that left lung up. We'll just take three deep breaths into that left rib cage. Checking in with ourselves today. And then you'll float up and then you'll side bend, kind of teeter-totter over to the other side and stretch. And then breathing into that left lung or right lung. I sometimes like to pretend my left is my right and my right is my left. Makes life confusing when you do that. Do it that way. <laughs> Let's do one more breath here. And then we'll come up and then just very lightly, light fist. Take your thumbs inside your, uh, kind of touching your palm. Wrap your four fingers around the thumb. And then just have a kind of a light grip of that thumb. And then just a light little tap just below your collarbones, across your chest. Kind of 
loose, not aggressive, just a gentle tap. Sometimes that sternum can be tender. That might feel really good. You can take a tap to the tops of your shoulders where the traps are. You can take a tap to the side and the front of the rib cage. Your solar plexus is where your ribs intersect in the front of the bottom. You could tap there if that feels interesting. Anywhere that feels tender, uh, like it needs a little bit of attention, that's what you're in search of. We're gonna take about 30 seconds to explore this. You can go slow, you can go fast. Just kind of a little check-in. This might be our pre-test today. Yeah, we'll do this again at the end and see if the sensation shifts. <laughs> so coming up on our final three breaths. All right, and when you feel satisfied, we are going to lie on one side now. So we'll come off of whatever prop we use. You're gonna lie on your side with your knees bent. Now you have two options. You could take, so I'm lying on my left side. You can lie on whatever side you wanna start with. But we're going to lay on our side, kind of like we're at a slumber party. And you can have your hand resting under your head or you can rest your head on your bicep, whatever feels better on your neck. Now, this is where you might insert a prop and it could be anything soft. It could be a little squishy exercise ball. It could be a folded up blanket. It could be a pillow. I'm gonna use the shawl that I have just to kind of show you it can be anything. You're gonna lay your rib cage on that prop. And then we're going to breathe into that prop, or if you're not using a prop, you're gonna breathe into your mat. So as you inhale, breathe wide and deep into that prop underneath you, and exhale, let yourself get heavy. Now your top hand, you can take your thumb to the back of your ribs and then have your forefingers wrap to the sides. So now you get to breathe into both ribs kind of in a wide way into your hand, into your prop. And then as you exhale, let it all go. So this is some resistance training for our lungs here. Let's take about, we're gonna take five slow deep breaths. There might be all kinds of congestion or resistance. That's very normal in the body. Can you just work with what you're noticing? All right, we'll simply sit up to change sides. So you'll use your hands, press yourself up, Maybe before you lie on the other side, you take a moment and acknowledge maybe the two arms or the two halves of the body feel a little askew, a little different, a little asymmetrical. All right, so if you're using that prop, you'll use it again on the other side. You can have your knees bent, legs stacked in front of you, either hand behind the head or arm, head resting on the arm like a pillow. And then you can take your top hand to your top ribs as well. And then notice the hand, notice the prop. Now breathe into both lungs. Think of widening and expanding. And then as you exhale, let your bones get heavy against the ground. So we'll repeat this as well. If you want, you can lay your head on your arm instead. Whatever your neck feels comfortable with.
And then when you've done about five reps, we'll come up and we're actually going to go to the first side again, but we're going to change it up to our first in pose together. So what that will look like, you'll have two options. We're going to come onto our forearm this time. So we're not going to be resting on our elbow on the ground or really the elbow and the forearm are now on the ground. So you want your fingers pointing forward. You want your elbow more or less right under your shoulder. You don't want it like underneath you because you're not going to get a side stretch if it's too, too underneath you or if it's too like out. You want it right under your elbow, your elbow right under your shoulder. And then you can feel what it's like to lift up out of your shoulder, like engage. And then to make this yin, you're going to disengage. You're going to hike your shoulder up by your ear. You're going to get all this good stretching in your waist and in your ribs. So this very much is where we're going to stay. This is a pretty good place to stay, especially if you're tight in this way today. That being said, if you want a deeper option, if you need more sensation, you would press up onto your palms and you would hike your shoulders so the side ribs, again, this waist gets a bigger stretch. The legs are slightly angled forward to help with balance. I find that the legs are back in line with their, if everything's in one long line, that can be like really wobbly. Um, so you can kind of take some of that wobble, wobbliness out. So either way, we're, we're going to be here for about 10 breaths, or a little bit longer than 10 breaths. So decide what option would work for you. If you do come up on your hands, the elbow is locked out. We don't say lock out the joints much in yoga, but in this, in yin, for this one, you can lock it out a little bit. Ah. And do let your shoulder hike up on purpose. That's going to get all the connective tissue under the ribs, under the shoulder blade. Ah. And a little bit goes a long way with this one. And if you notice you know, you're losing the stretch, it could be you're like leaning back. And if you lean forward, that can give you more of that stretch you're looking for. Let's take our last three breaths here. And then you'll simply sit up. And my favorite thing to do before going to the other side is just reflect and notice what shifted in that short amount of time in the waist, in the arms. Maybe one arm feels longer than the other. I know mine certainly does. And then we'll do it all again. So most likely you'll do the same version that you did on the first side. You'll do it on the second side for consistency. But sometimes our sides might need different things. So maybe, maybe work with that. Be open to, you might uh, adjust the plan if you need it. I can already tell you this is like a way tighter side. So <laughs> you can have your elbow on the ground and that might be where you stay, shoulder lifts up. Or you can press up onto your palms and hike that shoulder up. Notice if you're leaning back, that's a way to kind of bypass the stretch. You wanna be directly on your side, maybe even lean forward a tiny bit to get to that place of sensation. It helps directing your breath into that lung on the side that you're stretching it can help create even more space.
We'll take our last three breaths here. Although I feel like this, we could do a little longer if one side's tighter, but we'll move on shortly. Oh. All right, and then you'll sit up and check it out. Notice how you feel in your body, take the arms up. Maybe there's a bit more of an even sensation in those arms. We're gonna do a little soupy grind while we're here. We're just gonna get some of the energy to move a little bit more. So you can follow along with me. So you're gonna to lean to one side and then you're gonna circle your torso to the front of the room, to the other side, and then round the back to the back of the room. And you'll just continue to kind of churn your body in one direction of the circle for about five more times. And the head is just along for the ride. The, you know, like the hips, the middle of the back is what's kind of propelling this movement. Noticing where you feel tight along the circle, where it feels congested, where you might be able to uh, liberate free up what might be a little tighter. And then you can reverse as you're ready and going in. You might even take your hands to the floor if that feels good. And last time here. All right, we're gonna do our next uh, yin pose, focusing on the hamstrings a little bit more and the back, uh, you know, it's all connected. So I'm gonna straighten my right leg a little bit at a diagonal out to the right, and then take the sole of my left foot onto that right inner thigh. And ever so gently, and then pick up your torso and twist it a little bit towards that straight leg. So you have to lift up and then twist to your right. And then we'll take our hands to the ground, lift up tall through the waist, inhale. As you exhale, crawl your fingertips forward. Start to pour over your straight leg as if you could let gravity push your forehead towards your chin. Now you can uh, make this a little more prop focus uh, and stick a prop between your forehead and your chin to kind of close the gap. So I have this block here. I might set my forehead on this block or I might set my arms on this block. I mean, in block is just one, one prop. You could use all kinds of props here. Um, pillows, blankets, um, it will just give you a little more feeling of support as you pour over that straight leg. And so we'll be here for a little bit of time, about a minute and a half. If you feel resistance, like your neck doesn't want to quite release, to the back of the neck doesn't want to quite let go, you could always Rest your cheeks and your hands, assuming you have, you know, a prop to support your arms here. up on our last 10 breaths. So for this remainder of time, 
what can soften further? How can you release deeper in these last few moments here? And we'll pick ourselves up and just slowly press ourselves up. Now you can simply just sit up, lean back on your hands and pause, but I'm going to offer a counter pose. It's just a little more active counterbalance to what we just did. So you would follow me. Um, so if your right leg is extended, that means your opposite arm, your left arm, you're going to circle it back. Your left palm is going to go to the floor. Your left fingertips point to the wall behind you. And then you're going to lift your body up where you're balancing on this knee. So it looks like this. And you're just making a giant side stretch all through that right body. And you're leaning back. There's a heart opener component to the side bend. And then we'll sit. And you'll do it all again. Then we'll take the left leg out to a, a slight diagonal out to the left and then the sole of the right foot to the inner thigh. And you can press into the floor, pick up your spine, twist ever so gently to that left leg. And you just start to fold over that leg, let your head hang loose. And that might mean you back out of the forward fold initially and you just hang out where it feels comfortable. And then as time goes by, then it becomes easier to fold into your body. We're about halfway there. So notice if your shoulders are tensing up, can you let them go a little bit more while you're here? We'll take our last three breaths here. And then softly draw your hands in, press yourself up, stack up, and then you can take your left arm back behind you, press it on the floor, and then kind of the other arm sweeps overhead. Kind of take that bent knee, scoot it back so you can balance on your bent knee as you open through that side yawning that left side of your body and then sitting back down. All right, we're gonna continue our journey getting into the side body. Uh, we're gonna come into something called cat pulling its tail and uh, we'll get into it step by step. Okay, so it'll be a little interesting uh, cueing, but totally, totally doable. All right, so it's gonna start off pretty simple. You're going to lie on your back. 
and we'll extend our right leg long to the end of the mat. And then pick up your left knee, bend it into your chest. And then with the right hand, you're going to guide that bent knee all the way across your body. And you're going to come into a spinal twist. And then you can take your arms, uh, left arm wide. If you want to stick a prop under this bent knee, you can. Instead of that, you can hook your right toes behind your bottom leg, just like to create a shelf. We're going to hang out here for a little bit and let our spine open up gradually let gravity hold us to take either your hands or a prop behind your head as we stay here i'm going to grab my little blanket and kind of stuff it under my head just soften here Now, we're not fully in cat pulling its tail yet, but you certainly can stay right here. This is a lovely uh, yin pose in itself, in and of itself. So either stay here or to move it into cat pulling its tail, you're going to take your left arm and you're going to reach it down towards the end of your mat. And then that bottom leg, that straight leg. You're going to bend your bottom knee so much and inch it back that you can clasp your bottom foot with your back hand. And, you know, you can do whatever you want with the top knee. You could have the top foot knee bent, top foot on the floor. You could hook your toes inside the kind of the knee crease, the knee pit, I guess. Whatever feels good, but we want to be able to stay here and soften. And if you reach with all your mind and you still can't grab your toes and find a bind, just reaching in the direction of your toes is enough here. It's still cat pulling its tail. You can even take your right arm back to the wall behind you to get a little more length through that right side. We'll hang out here. Be here for 10 more breaths. You can either keep the bind or let it go if it's no longer serving you. If it, if it feels strenuous, you want to let that bind go. Take our last breath, inhale fully, and then as you exhale, let it all go. And I think the fun part of all this is to come back to center on your mat in an even position and observe what movements are occurring energetically. Where does it feel warm in the body and where does it feel light and open? All right, and then we'll simply switch sides. So start by 
bending your knees, planting your feet, and it starts with a spinal twist. And that's the first thing we're going to do. You're going to hug your right knee into your chest this time, and then extend the left leg long on the mat. With your left hand, bring the right knee all the way across your body. You can hook those toes behind your bottom leg or just lay your toes on the floor. You can put a prop under your knee as well, that bent knee. And then we'll just hang out here in our spinal twist for a moment. So you'll definitely want to prop your knee if your low back feels a little tweaky here. You're welcome to stay here, especially stay here if that's how you took the first side, just to be consistent. Otherwise, we're going to take it into cat pulling its tail. You'll take your right arm and reach it down to the end of the mat. See if the bottom leg that's straight, see if you can rebend it and kind of coax your foot towards your hand and your hand towards your foot. And maybe it feels appropriate to clasp your uh, hand around your foot. And if not, then just let it be kind of more of this energetic kind of bind, like where you're reaching the foot towards the hand and the hand towards the foot. And we'll be here a little bit longer. We'll take our last three breaths here. And then let that bind go. Return to your back and take that pause once more. Notice how you feel. And maybe parts of you have been opened up or lines of energy have been stimulated in a way that feels like there's more movement now. And then once you assess that, we'll bend our knees, gather them into the chest and rock across the back of the hips and then roll over to the side. We're gonna come up and we're going to play with that first kind of seated stretch we did, but we're gonna vary it up. We're gonna make it more of a side stretch because uh, it's all about opening the lungs today. So you're gonna go back to that diagonal, that right leg out at a diagonal um, and the sole of your left foot to that inner thigh. We're going to start by side bending towards that straight leg. So you'll take your left hand on the ground and then sweep your right arm over your head. This is where we're just going to hang out for a moment. You want to give your neck and shoulders some love. You're going to bend your elbow down as you look to the ground and then stretch the arm over your head as you look up. And you'll do that a few more rounds. Bend the elbow, gaze down at your hand on the floor, and then gaze up at your top hand as it goes overhead. Just to kind of move some energy in that neck. Oh, 
All right, now we're going to stay in the side stretch. And there's actually a lot of variation from here. And this probably is not the most yin pose here. It's kind of active to keep your shoulders down. I'm gonna invite you to grab a prop for this. Now, if you don't have a prop, you could just use your own thigh as a prop. And you might have to bend your knee to bring that thigh up closer to meet your elbow. But you rest your hand, um, your head in your hand. You can take your arm over your head or you can take your hand to your hip here. You wanna get a side stretch through that uh, left waist. Now I'll show you in a block, a block is convenient because you can change the height of it really easily, but you can build your height with multiple props. And stick a prop behind your straight leg, rest your elbow on that prop. And that creates this really nice opening for that side. Now I recommend starting with hand on your left hip, left hand on your hip. And then as you feel comfortable staying here, maybe later on as we stay here, you know, we're gonna be here for a minute, Maybe you take the arm over your head, but if it feels like a traffic jam and it feels really tense, then you want to tone it down. You want to leave your hand on your lap instead. So we're going to hang out here. Again, getting into that fascia, all that the QL, that low back area as well. It's to open up. And if you're noticing mostly neck, that means typically you want to take your elbow and lift it higher off the floor to get out of your neck. And so that might mean even more props, um, depending on what you need tonight. We'll be here for 10 more breaths. If you want to vary it up, maybe you take that arm over your head or maybe you just kind of find, find the version that feels interesting for 10 more breaths. Before you come out of it, stay in the pose and reach that top arm away from you. So reach that left arm away and then pull on an invisible handle and let that bring you up. And then take a moment to sit in a neutral shape and just check in with yourself. Maybe, maybe move around if you need that. <laughs> oh, so disorienting in the best way, isn't it? All right, other side. Extending the left leg at a small diagonal out to the left, sole of the right foot to the inner leg. Maybe you put a prop behind your leg, whatever you propped, however you propped before, probably try that on first again, the same way. And then you can take your elbow to that prop, rest your head in your hand. Maybe if you're propless, maybe you bend your knee. This, that, that means this leg is gonna stay active the whole time but it will support you in getting that nice side stretch. It'll also support your neck if that leg stays active. If it starts to get really lax, you might go too deep. Hand can be on your hip or overhead at any time. Ah, oh, such a good feeling.
we'll be here a little longer, so take whatever variation you need for these final moments. So we'll stay in the pose, but take the top arm, reach it long away, and then pull on an invisible handle to bring yourself up. And then we are going to sit in a comfortable seat one more time. We're heading towards the end of class, so we're going to do our post test now. So in the beginning, we did these little loose fists, and we were just kind of palpating all over the chest and lungs. So we get to do that one more time and notice if there's any changes. So you can take your thumbs, kind of take them across to the center of your palm and then take your four fingers over your thumb, have a light, loose kind of grip, and then just start to tap. So it might not be necessarily your absent of sensation. It might actually mean there's even more sensation second time around. And that just means probably you're more in your body, right? Um, and that's how I take it from my you know, feel more sensitive, um, more attuned to the layers of um, sensation. So whatever you're noticing, maybe some parts are less tender than they were before. And we'll take about 30 seconds to explore below the collarbone at the center of the sternum, um, at the side and center of the ribs, the tops of the shoulders too. I don't know about you, it feels a little more tame overall. A little less uh, intense than it once was. All right, and when you feel satisfied, we're going to move on. So let's lie on our back. We're going to do a restorative kind of happy baby or yin happy baby next. So when you lie on your back, I recommend the support under your head for this one, especially if you know you have a tight neck or tight shoulders. And then you're gonna open your knees wide and flex your feet. Now you're welcome to start kind of the, the most basic way is to hold under your knees, pull down on your legs and then open them wide with your uh, hands. So you're creating this kind of squat, wide legged squat on the ceiling. And this is our yin happy baby. So it's pretty still. Now you can take it a little further by grabbing the ankles or the calves and pulling down. I can kind of hug the arm bones back in the socket. You can also grab the outside edges of your feet and do the same thing. Pull the arm bones back in the socket. And if you do feel called to move a little bit, you can move now, but no, we're gonna uh, move into stillness after that. So just a few little sways and then find, find your stillness here. Keeping the collarbones wide. Ooh. 
We'll be here a little bit longer. It might start to get intense. This is some compression in the hips, some healthy compression. Our inner thighs, hamstrings, you might feel. Okay, now we're gonna do a variation on this. You're gonna rock your body to the right. Stay there. See if you can begin to lengthen your left leg towards straight. It doesn't have to straighten all the way. And in fact, it might start to wobble a little bit or quake. But keep leaning to the right as you lengthen the left leg. And then we'll reset, you'll bend both knees, come rock back to center. We'll do the other side, rock over to the left side of your hip or kind of back of your hip and then extend your right leg towards straight. Again, it doesn't have to be all the way straight. In fact, it rarely ever is. And then we'll come back to center and then you can hug your knees in and rock. We're just gonna extend the legs and just shake out the feet just very, very briefly. And then pause right here with the legs floating up in the air. If you wanna slide your hands just lightly underneath your pelvis, giving your hips the tiniest boost, kind of the wrist and the, the top of the hand are kind of acting as a prop to elevate your hips just a teeny bit higher to make this more easeful to keep your legs up. And just float our legs for a moment, disengage our legs, kind of let our waterfall pose happen here. Take one more breath. And then as you exhale, just gently bend the knees, hug them in, massage along your low back. Okay. All right, and it's time for our final rest, Shavasana. So you're welcome to get as comfortable as you like. Take that extra step to get comfortable. Maybe cover yourself with a blanket. Maybe stick a pillow behind your head. Whatever you need to feel good here to really receive the rest, take that time to get situated. And we'll just take a few minutes here. Shavasana.
start to re-emerge at whatever rate feels right. Maybe that first means taking some large breaths and then maybe wiggling the fingers and toes, moving about your wrists and ankles. And then eventually rolling up to the side, make your way up to a seat. And we're gonna just take a moment once we sit and pause and reflect on that intention we set for ourselves. If you wanna take your hands together at your heart and just kind of pause and notice, notice how your intent has informed your practice, how by focusing on what you want to receive, there are, there are the fruits. And uh, we'll seal our practice with a single om tonight. Um, and, you know, obviously you can sing with me or silently, you know, you can silently om as well. But we'll rub our palms together, generating some warmth taking that warmth into our heart, thumb tips to sternum. We'll take a full breath, followed by one all. Inhale fully, exhale fully. Inhale for one all. Oh. We'll bow the thinking mind to the caring heart. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to share your practice. It is truly an honor to serve you. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace, peace.